ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to q4 fi24 conference call of nenol limited as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask question after the presentation conclude should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touch tone phone i now hand the conference over to ms purwangi jain from valorem advisors thank you and over to you ma'am Good morning everyone. My name is Purvangi Chen from Valorum Advisors. We represent the investor relations for Nilon Limited. On behalf of the company, I would like to thank you all for participating in the company's earnings call for the fourth quarter and the financial year 2024. Before we begin, let me mention a short cautionary statement. Some of the statements made in today's earnings call may be forward-looking in nature. such forward looking statements are subject to risk and uncertainties which could cause actual results to differ from those anticipated such statements are based on management's belief as well as assumptions made by and information currently available to the management audiences are cautioned not to place any undue reliance on these forward looking statements in making any investment decisions the purpose of today's earnings call is probably to educate and bring awareness about the company's fundamental business and financial quarter under review let me introduce you to the management participating with us in today's earnings call and hand it over to them for their opening remarks we have with us mr rahul v sagar chief executive officer and executive director nilon limited mr kunal v sagar director nilon management service private limited mr manish b parik Chief Financial Officer and VP Finance, Nilon Limited. Mr. Jasmin K. Bhavsa, Company Secretary, Vice President Legal and Compliance Officer, Nilon Limited, and Mr. Ashish Bharadia, VP Business Development and Investor Relations, Nilon Management Services Private Limited. Without any delay, I request Mr. Kunal Sagar to start with his opening remarks, followed by financial and operational highlights of the company. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Purvangi. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, actually. It's a pleasure to welcome you all to our earnings conference call for the fourth quarter and for the financial year 2024. Let us first take you through the financial performance of the company for the fourth quarter and the full financial year 2023-24. For the quarter under review, the company reported a total income of 154 crores. Which grew by 4% year on year and 0.7% quarter on quarter. EBITDA was 122 crores, which grew by 5% year on year and 1.4% quarter on quarter. The EBITDA margin for the quarter was 79.47%. Profit after tax for the quarter stood at approximately 51 crores, which grew by 3.3% year on year. However, it declined 1.7 percent on a quarter-on-quarter basis. Net margin for the quarter was approximately 33 percent. For the year under review, the company's total income stood at 607 crores, so growth of 5.5 percent year-on-year. EBITDA stood at 481 crores, which grew by 4.4 percent year-on-year. EBITDA margin stood at 79.26 percent. Profit after tax was 206 crores, reflecting a growth of 30% year-on-year. Net margin for the year was approximately 34%. On the operational front, the average occupancy for the company as a whole, that is Nilon Knowledge Park and Nilon House combined, was stable at 99.8% for the fourth quarter of the financial year 24, and as on the 31st of March 2024. Nilon Knowledge Park was 100% occupied. Deutsch has agreed to take up additional picket-out space at NKP, accommodating approximately 200 to 200 to 250 seats. With reference to questions from shareholders about potential restructuring or other possible value accretive measures, discussions and consultations with concerned parties to address relevant issues are continuing. The company understands the importance of this aspect for investors and shareholders, and will communicate any decision taken in this regard expeditiously. 
as regards whether the company intends to move the new tax regime after careful analysis and deliberation and board meetings the company has decided to stay with the old tax regime for the present this is primarily due to the accumulated max credit available for set off in the old tax regime whereby the company estimates the financial benefits of moving to the new tax regime for the financial year 24 25 will be nominal whereas likely benefits to minority shareholders and any potential restructuring by remaining under the old tax regime are estimated to be appreciably greater accordingly there is little to be gained by making an irreversible move to the new tax regime at this time and closing the option to potentially greater gain from benefits under the restructuring under any restructuring available only under the old tax regime this position will be reviewed regularly by the company for any change in circumstances lastly we are happy to announce that the board has proposed a final dividend of 11 rupees or 110% of the face value per share for the financial year 24 subject to approval by shareholders in the forthcoming 65th agm this is in addition to the interim dividend of 15 rupees per share that was paid in quarter 4 2024 with this we conclude our opening remarks and open the floor to questions thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touch tone telephone if you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue you may press star and two participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have a first question from the line of Rajiv Malhotra from HCPL Parts Company. Company, please go ahead. Uh, hi, um, uh, Kunal and Rahul. Let me congratulate you on behalf of lot of investors for an extremely wonderful result. Um, we have a problem of uh, no vacancy which cannot be better uh, than anything for a real estate company so um, so hats off for the management um my only query would be um uh, uh, I, the market understands that kunal ji sold off most of their holdings uh, but we are happy to note that he's still on the call Uh, he's not a director, but a director on the management services board. Is there any particular reason for that? We have to get worried on, or something like that. So this is Kunal. Uh, I'll answer your question quite briefly. Uh, I've been in discussions or looking to uh, sell my stake for some time before the actual sale. Uh, an opportunity arose. in march of 2024 which i then moved forward with and just to be very clear the the reasons for my selling are entirely personal they are not in any way related to the company or its performance uh, at all in any way so just want to mention that and i hope that answers your question yeah thank you thank you for uh, answering it so clearly uh, if i could just do a brief follow was about gic not interested in picking the stake I I wouldn't really want to comment any more on the sale aspect if you don't mind because it's not really the subject matter. That's absolutely perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rajiv. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants: you may press star and one to ask questions. We have a next question from the line of Satinder Singh Bedi from E E on Infotech Investments. Please go ahead. we yeah, are uh, uh, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations for for great occupancy uh, uh so uh, um, what is the valuation uh, as of 31st of march uh, 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 because that exercise would have uh, been gotten done so we just wanted to understand what is the valuation that has been arrived at the valuation just just a second sadhanda yeah yeah Uh, 
the valuation of the company is on uh, 31st March is approximately 4,500 crores. 4,500 crores. So then there is not a, it's not a market value. This is a fair value as in our annual report as we are required to present it. Yeah, but but uh, I, I assume there will be a market valuation uh, exercise that would be got done by a registered valuer as an annual uh, exercise. Uh, uh, like all other property companies or whatever listed entities with real estate assets would do. Uh, I, I just try to amplify, sir, where I am coming from. Uh, the point is that the the company has to undergo some restructuring in the future, okay, which we understand the management is working on. Uh, that restructuring uh, might entail a delisting or whatever, okay. Our feeling is that uh, uh, having a, 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 a market value estimation done uh, safeguards the interest of minority shareholders going forward in case of any delisting activity. Okay, so that because uh, uh, the reality is we have an asset which generates about 480 crores of NOI, and a property as marquee as yours, as well leased out as yours. Okay. Uh, Typically, would trade at maybe eight, eight and a half percent uh, kind of a cost, uh, of a yield. So, so our sense is that this is this is a property which should be valued at about six thousand crores, uh, based on uh, uh, on uh, comparable deals across multiple REITs which are listed and which have similar kind of properties. So, so if if we just look at the fifteen twenty valuations that uh, today are there in the market, okay. This property for its NOI uh, and for its stable uh, uh, kind of tenant base, okay, should not be valued at less than 6,000 crores, okay. So, so, so our only point is that, okay, if the valuation is close to the market value, it does protect the minority interest uh, uh, at a future point in time when some restructuring happens, okay. So it gives that comfort. So that's where I'm coming from. So, so this again, just to mention, uh, as you mentioned, this four and a half thousand crores is the fair fair value that uh, is part of our uh, annual report and part of our uh, statements. Uh, we don't actually do any market value per se, which we then you know put out into the public domain. Uh, by definition, that is subjective to an extent, and hence we don't really. I go down that road in terms of whether it is X or Y. Uh, it's relatively straightforward what market values are, and there are ranges based on number of norms that uh, can be used to determine that. So we prefer not to be that specific on that, you know. Right, sir. Just to persist uh, with one follow-up on this. So how is the fair market value then calculated? So when we say fair value is 4,500, how do we calculate that currently? I think we would leave the calculation of market value to someone like yourself who is, there are so many ways to do it depending on what your specific purpose is or what your specific goal is in terms of determining that value, uh, no, you know, whether no, it sir, is a, I, yeah. No, no, sir. Sir, my point was when Nidlon has assessed the fair market value, fair value at 4,500 crores, how has that figure been arrived at? The Nidlon estimation of 4,500 as the fair value value. You're saying how have we got to 4,500 value? Is that what you're saying? That is the fair valuation done by the approved valuers, and this valuation is being done as per the requirement of India's standards. Sadinda, does that answer your question? Uh, sir, we have the line for Mr. Sadinda disconnected. Okay, so if he, if he comes back on the line, uh, do, uh, I mean, you can reconnect sure, him. We'll try and finish the answer. Sure, sir. Uh, we'll move on to the next question from the line of Prayan Jain from Peelwelt. Please go ahead. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you're audible. Please go ahead with your questions. Yes, uh, my question is on Nidlon House. Uh, any plans uh, that you can share uh, for the visibility? Uh, it's been a while since we got any progress update on that front. Uh, also, uh, it states that 6,000 square feet is uh, lying vacant. So, uh, any efforts on that way? Yeah, so, uh, Nidlon House, we are uh, in the process of working on it. And 
as soon as there is anything significant to say, you know, um, as you know, it's a Tata sold property. It's a, it's a multi-owner property. So when when uh, properties are of this profile and of this nature, it takes a little bit longer. But we are very keenly working on it to find a solution uh, which is in the best interest of everyone. And and uh, once we have anything significant to say, we will put it out there. But uh, you can. Uh, uh, we are working on it very uh, keenly, and it is a it is a priority as well. But because of the profile of the ownership structure of the building, these things are marginally complicated to some extent, as you know. I understand, and I completely believe that best efforts are on. Uh, but it's been uh, since we've been here. Uh, so I was asking if there is any progress in the discussions because I'm sure. We would have uh, better options emerging, and us uh, deliberating uh, on something. Maybe uh, something is workable this year, perhaps. So I was looking for some clarity. Yeah. So, so right now we have nothing significant to say. Uh, when we do have something significant to say, we will put it out there. There, you, you mentioned some vacant space. I think some, some, some part of that is in the basement as well. Uh, so that, that, that's not really what we are looking to, to license in. In any way, apart from that, uh, uh, the majority of the space owned by NL is uh, licensed out. So once we do have anything significant to say, we will come back. But because of once again, because of the profile, it's it's a bit of a uh, uh, it, it, it's we are working on it. We are we are we are working on it. So for an old minority shareholder like me, uh, what can I look forward say over the next? A uh, couple of years in terms of uh, growth, because management of the asset has been great. But in terms of growth, uh, what is there to look forward? <laughs> you mean growth in NH or growth in the company as a whole? Overall, well, I mean, uh, you know, uh, as of now, we we don't have anything significant to say in or any concrete plans or any significant plans in terms of growth, in terms of additional capex additional assets within NL. Uh, <clears throat> as you know, the existing asset is practically uh, fully occupied since the last few few years. Occupancy has been very high. And uh, uh, phase five was completed in uh, June 21. We received the OC. So uh, it's a it's a phase of consolidation now, and uh, once we have anything significant to say, we will let you know. We do want to say, though, that the growth in the revenue will largely be driven by the profile of the licensees in NKP and also the potential increases in license fees due to escalations and if and when possible due to uh, new licensees coming in as well. So this is uh, definitely an, an, an area where there is an opportunity for potential growth in the revenue and we are focusing very closely on that and if you look at the results in uh, FI24 as, as compared to the earlier uh, year as, as well, you can see that due to the contracted escalations uh, actually happening and fructifying and uh, hopefully now uh, 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 increases in license fees for any potential vacancies that are likely to happen. Now we we hope to see growth in revenue as well. This is of course standard and procedural. And I, uh, as said earlier, I commend on the management of the asset that we have right now. We we're sweating it out uh, to its uh, optimized uh, potential. Uh, what I meant to ask, I'll rephrase. Do we have any uh, priorities for this year? Yeah, or is it just uh, uh, run the business? So, so, so the priorities of, for this year would be as as I as we as we mentioned increases in uh, license fees in contracted license fees when the opportunity arises for uh, new licensees to come in. Hopefully, at uh, uh, increased license fees on on and on on the better terms, commercial and otherwise. So, uh, of course, restructuring of the Zon house is a priority as well. So, really, for an asset of this nature, the, uh, the increase in the value or the so-called growth 
from a stable asset can can come from an increase in in the top line. We also very focused on the repairs and the maintenance and the capex so that the asset uh, is able retains its uh, uh, quality, which will enable us to increase licensees as well as attract new potential A grade licensees. So that's always an area of focus is uh, repair, maintenance, capex, and uh, uh, up upgrading the uh, asset and the facilities in. Um, NKP and to some extent in and around NKP as well. Got it. Uh, just to summarize, if I ask for a simplistic uh, view uh, from a 607 crore top line and, and 205 uh, crores of bottom line, uh, any estimates for the next couple of years based on the conversation we've already had uh, with our partner? Can't really, so, can't, can't really speak on that. Uh, Estimates, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you know, you you can see from the information that we have put out, you can you can make a good uh, uh, you can do your own analysis. Each one can do his own analysis from the information that we have put out there. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, we we don't really want to speak of any uh, any re revenue assumption going into the FI 25, 26, etc. I was saying in absence of any decision or outcome on, on the restructuring, if the things continue as is, any range of growth like 10 to 15 percent, something like that, uh, to look forward? That's what I was asking. As Rahul said, we don't normally comment on potential growth or what the estimate might be for next year. That's especially uh, relevant in this year in case we have, as you know, there are some potential uh, long-standing discussions on one of our old, very valued licensees moving out and other new people potentially moving in in their place. So that mm -hmm. is a process that will play itself out over this year and the next. And we are, of course, following it very closely. And as we've mentioned, uh, that's a process that will unfold over the next couple of years. So in, we don't want to be guessing in terms, without receiving any specific notices, we don't want to be guessing when exactly those vacancies may occur, when we will fill them, and what the effect on revenue might be. Uh, the, the only point we had made is that we see potentially good demand and we're having good discussions for this uh, potential vacancy. But since we don't have any vacancy notices yet, there are no specific uh, transactions that one can actually include or contract. Uh, and so, so that's the potential variables over this year uh, that may be there. All right. Thank you so much uh, for sharing all that you can and wishing you all the best. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Kevin Gandhi from Cab Grow Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, I hope my voice is audible. Yes. Uh, uh, sir, just want to understand, I just have one or two questions, just want to understand what are the potential issues that management is facing in this uh, whole restructuring of the delisting process. So it's been basically six quarters, around one and a half years since I've been listening that we are going to restructure, we are, going, we are doing something about the process. What are issues are we facing and when would this finally be resolved is my only question. Thank you. Isn't, we appreciate your question. The answer is more or less essentially the same as we've been mentioning over our last uh, several calls, which is based on the structure and based on the priorities of our uh, major shareholder, we are looking at what is the most optimum restructuring or re set of uh, issues that we can take up for restructuring. And we have, uh, again, we're in the process of discussing that and we don't really have anything more specific than what we've been saying. And I know that you're keen to have that answer, but there is no more information that we can give you simply because it's a process that has to play out based on what back and forth happens in discussions. No, so uh, uh, what, what question I had is, so basically any expected timeline, so basically we might have been discussing this thing since many quarters now. When would this get finalized? Yeah. So. When is my only thing concerned here, sir? 
we take your point, but we are not able to give you any time frame on that, Kevin. By its very nature, if there is a discussion that is going on, which is a essentially a, a discussion that also includes discovering the various options that might be available to us and to choose the best one, and we are still in the process of getting and analyzing information that comes in, then there is no time frame one would want to put on that. The point is to get the right set of uh, options and then move forward with them, and that's what we are uh, working on. So, sir, are we actually sure that we want to either delist or restructure in the form of REIT? So, in, in that case, are we sure about one of the options or are we still uh, like thinking or being delusive about what to do, whether to delist or to actually restructure by the form of uh, uh, REIT? So, are we sure about what we want to actually do or we are still thinking about one of the two options? As you said, we are there is no decision at all on which option we are going to take. We have never uh, put forward any information that says that we have agreed on a delisting or on something other than a delisting. Uh, so you are correct on, in, uh, understand, in, in your understanding that there is no specific direction or no specific aspect of this that we have concluded on. Okay, sir. All the best for your future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Rajiv Malhotra from HCPL. Please go ahead. Um, I'm just taking it as a follow-on to one of our earlier participants regarding the fair value of our properties. Uh, I do agree that it has been clearly mentioned about uh, having it uh, fairly valued by a independent registered valuer. But if uh, Kunali, if you see, it's usually uh, the, the valuation is done based on market value itself, right? So uh, the point being uh, that the market value cannot be different by 35%. Uh, you may take it as a suggestion that if uh, uh, this can get narrowed uh, at a time in the future, if and if only there is a restructuring, uh, this may be uh, this may become an important point. It's a balance sheet entry, which most companies do it. It's just the uh, detail or attention uh, paid on this entry uh, in the notes to accounts and your notes to accounts since uh, since the time I have seen your balance sheets in 2010 are exemplary. So. Maybe you, you could have a look at it with the uh, with your uh, accounting firms once again. Rajiv and uh, the question initially was from uh, Mr. Satinder Bedi. We would we thank you for that uh, for your thoughts and suggestions on that. And do be assured that we will certainly take a look at what you're saying to see if there's any change or addition we need to uh, make to our accounts. And uh, of course, during the next call, we would. Uh, be in a position to update on that, whether it's something that we would change or not, but we certainly take yeah. a look at what you said. Thank you. That's a perfect resolution. Thanks. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Lux Gen, an individual investor, please. <laughs> Hello. Hello, am I audible, sir? Yes. Uh, but yeah, but, yes. Sorry? Your voice is echoing. If you could just slow down. Yeah, is it better now? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. Good. Yeah. My uh, first question. Sir, so last year we did 85 crores of CapEx, and this year it was 55 crores only. Why was there no increase in dividends despite of 30 crores saving in capex? This is my first question. Can you just give us a second that one? Yeah. You're saying, uh, you're saying that, can you just repeat that just to so we understand it properly? So uh, there was a reduction of 30 crores in uh, capex. Sir. Last time it was 85 and this time it was only 55 this year. So 30 crores of savings was there in CapEx. 
but uh, we haven't increased any dividends so this 30 crores if we distribute in dividend we get another 4 rupees or 3 rupees 3.5 Just to uh, to answer that, the previous year's 85 crores uh, included significant amounts of capex from phase five, and okay. the number has obviously reduced significantly in the year under review just now. Hmm. Also, in terms of, uh, we haven't linked that reduction in capex to the dividend because uh, not I to, can you repeat that? Sorry. What we are saying is that the reduction in capex is not linked to our profitability, and hence we are not linking it to dividend. Okay. It's a it's a cash flow it's the cash flow that you are looking at. Yes. We are not linking that cash flow to dividend. We are linking the dividend to profitability and the ability to sustain dividend and sustainability of property uh, of profitability. Okay. So, But in in previous con calls, you have mentioned that uh, the sustainable capex is going to fall down to 15 crores approximately, and that is going to be sustainable. So there is one more room, say 55 to 15. There is another room of more 40 crores. So there is more reduction in capex. So what are we going to do with uh, those extra cash? Uh, capital expenditure. We have lost without getting into the specific figures. One is. This is what we mentioned is the capex that are is related to phase five and the, uh, the the building construction. The other is the normal capex that we do in any given year to maintain the asset, and that will fluctuate based on requirements for that particular year. Without getting into the numbers, because we can't hear you very clearly to give you specific numbers, just to give you the general idea. Okay, so if there is any reduction from it's fifty five now, if there is further reduction, we are not planning to you know distribute any such thing in the form of dividend. So, again, the dividend is a function of profitability and being able to sustain a particular level of dividend over time, over successive years. So we are not, uh, you know, whether if, if there is higher uh, cash flow in a particular year, we are not necessarily linking it to too much of higher dividend for that year and then fluctuating again in one year. As you said, we are trying to keep dividends consistent and sustainable. Okay. Okay, I got it. Okay. And so, uh, so about the uh, net distributable cash flow, sir. Uh, if we calculate our NDCF, it comes out to four seventy crores, sir. Hello. Yes, is that right, sir? That amount four seventy crores. NDCF, if we calculate. Where are you getting this number from? If you can tell us, because we can't. Again, we're not able to change that clearly, so it's a little confusing. Uh, the, the, the first, uh, it's four twenty-five crores from cash flow from operation, and if we subtract fifty-five from it, which is the maintenance and capex, all those stuff, it comes to three seventy. And if we uh, add hundred crores, which uh, in NDCF the formula itself says that we have to add that interest amount, so it comes out to four seventy. I look. I think we are not able to identify this very specifically in our the, the cash flow that we are looking at. So, if if you don't mind, can we take this up with you separately? Otherwise, we'll. Uh, you know, I think we we'd rather do that rather than give you a general answer. Okay, we'll keep it separately. So no problem. Yeah, yeah. No problem. Yeah, if, if you don't mind, if you can just write it and send us a mail, we'll answer it very clearly. It'll be easier if you just tell us specifically the lines you are looking at because. Uh, this way we will just. Uh, you know, it, it won't be clear. I am getting this figure. NDCF uh, from cash only, sir. Uh, like nothing from uh, any great. It's just what right, is shown in, in the cash flow. I am getting those numbers. Nothing. Can't tell you exactly. Can you send us a mail on this, please? Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay. So my next question, yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, so, uh, what is the status of Nirvan House, sir? In earlier phone calls, we mentioned that we are keeping this in priority, and it's a very uh, advanced stage to uh, go for outright sale of Nirvan House. Are the other owners supportive, sir? And by when can we expect this uh, sale to happen? Because we have a uh, fifty thousand square feet in our uh, Nirvan Limited. Out of that Nirvan House, fifty thousand is Nirvan Limited. So when can so we expect this, sir? Yeah. So firstly, we just want to clarify that uh, we not really said at some point, at any at any point in time, that any discussions are at an advanced stage. So what I said earlier on the call, what we said earlier on the call is because of the profile of the asset is owned by multiple owners. Um, these discussions and, and and what we would like to do is definitely. Um, uh, going to take some time. We have we got the process. We we are doing what we can to get the best value for the company from Zan House. But uh, again, we, we just want to reiterate that because of the profile of this building being a multi-owner building, uh, <coughs> there are various issues uh, which uh, will which will. Arise based on the existing ownership structure, so we are working on that. And once we have anything significant to say, uh, we will tell you. In the interim, the the Amazon share of the building is uh, is licensed out uh, over the past few years, and is going is going to be continued to be licensed out uh, as of now. Uh, there's a very marginal vacancy that. We have, and um, yeah, that that's really what what the status is now. If there's anything significant, we can tell you. But there are nine to ten different owners in the building, which is why it's not uh, so straightforward to uh, come to the right uh, solution. But sir, are those other uh, owners are they supportive for the outright sale, sir? I mean, look, generally, of course, everybody wants. The best deal and the best outcome for the building, but it, it's always uh, not easy when there are different owners with different profiles, with different priorities. Some are individuals, some are corporates, uh, some are private companies, and you know, it, it's as you know, the 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 location of the building is not too bad. Uh, it's on any basin road, as you as you know. And uh, uh, look, I mean, it's it, it's because of purely to a large extent because of the fact that it's a multi-owner building that uh, uh, these things do do have various complications, and 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 we are working through these issues. The ownership profile is not is not so easy to uh, re resolve, and because it is a Asset in a very strategic location. It's it, it's not something that 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 uh, that anybody would just want to give away. So, so when we have something significant to say, we will tell you. Okay. My my last question, sir. So our old promoters, that is the Sagar family, are selling their stake. There is another block in the market of Mr. Rahul Sagar, sir, of 13 lakh shares. So why is GIC not showing any interest in buying this stake? Is it uh, um, I, that that has been answered? Sir, I know, but uh, let me just complete my question. Uh, is it uh, clear from this sir, because GIC is not showing interest in buying? Is it clear that we are not planning to delist Nirlon and they keep this listed and wait for the REIT, which the, which is the only option left? Because if GIC wanted to delist. He would have, yeah, they would have easily taken those stakes, which Rahul uh, Sagar uh, surrendered. Look, as we said right up front, uh, there is. This is not a call on which we are discussing share sales of various uh, promoters and why they are buying or not selling. 
One thing very clear, I'm not sure where you have the information that Rahul Sagar's block is in the market. There is no such thing. So yeah, I think a lot of what you're saying is speculator will request you not to speculate on that because whether GIC buys or doesn't buy, I mean, there's, you know, you, you, we can't go to an assumption as to what anyone's reasons are for buying or not buying shares. So please don't speculate on that because invariably, if I may say so, you will come to the wrong conclusion. That is, you know, I made a very clear statement in the beginning. And please go by what we said clearly in the beginning. Don't have any uh, speculative thoughts on this. Yeah. So, so we just want to clarify that I, I am, uh, I am Rahul Sagar speaking, and my block is definitely not on the market. So that that may be some confusion somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sir. My bad. I'm very sorry for no, that. No, don't worry. Don't worry. No, no. I, I, I don't know. I'm very sorry. Don't worry. So look, why we came uh, on this question is because GIC, uh, ha I mean, uh, Nirlon has only two options, either to delist or to go through SPV and then become read. But GIC not by indicates, like uh, for a minority minority shareholder from outside, it clearly shows that they don't want to delist, because in India, delisting is difficult. And if Lux, GIC these are, Lux, Lux, we don't want to continue on this question anymore. This, these are assumptions that you are making. Again, our request to you will be, please don't make these assumptions. It will lead you down a completely wrong conclusion for no reason at all. Okay. Okay, sir. No problem. Yeah, so, and and one request, sir. Uh, we have been requesting for GIC to sit on the concord for many uh, quarters, sir, now. So, just one request, please, uh, even a word by them would be very helpful for minority shareholders, sir. Okay. okay. Your, 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 your request is noted. Thanks, Lakshmi. A lot of quarters now, sir. So, even if there some statement will be very helpful for uh, minority shareholders. Thank you. That's it. That's it from my side. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Gaurav from Spark Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, hi, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. I just. Uh, Yes, sir, on the, the debt repayment, I joined a little bit late, so I might have missed in your initial comment. If you can just give some uh, clarity on what we are intending to do with the debt on our books in terms of repayment, given that we now have a steady sort of stream of uh, lease. lease. Well, uh, we have a five-year moratorium on our debt. Of that, uh, where we pay interest only. Okay. After that, two years is over so far. So we have three more years of interest only. Okay. Then we have a situation where we pay 25% of the debt between years 6 and 10. And then we have a bullet payment at the end of the 10th year, which is 75%. Got it. So for the next uh, three years from now, uh, we continue to pay the interest as well, only. Correct. And then after that, it is 25% over the next five years. Okay. Perfect. Makes sense. And then the rate of interest, uh, sir, remains uh, the same, or that can be as part of the contract can change, so like if, if the cycle sort of turns uh, in our favor. The rate of interest is a uh, link to the is linked to T bills. Okay. Right. Thanks for clarifying, sir. That's what. Thank That's you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Gaurav Kanna from. Capital, please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. My question is that uh, would you like to throw any further light on the promoter selling which has been done? Sorry, you're asking about the promoter sale? Yeah. Would we like yes. to share any further light? Uh, no further light, uh, except what we said in the beginning. Did you did you uh, did you hear what I said in the beginning? I won't repeat it then. Sir, I've heard it in the beginning. Any other light you want to throw? I'm no, 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 Gaurav, not at all. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Ranveer Singh from Yashvi Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Am I audible? Yes. yes. Yeah. So, uh, you came out with a notification in March saying that uh, the law and management services contract had been renewed. Uh, initially, you were paying... 1% uh, of your gross revenue as lease management services and 2% as property management services and paying a sum of 13 crore, 12 lakh, 50,000 as project management services in the existing terms, uh, like in the existing, con the renewed, in the renewed contract, 
what are the new terms like how much would you be paying as lease management how much would you be paying as property management how much commission would you be paying so, so the new terms are very uh, similar to the existing contract of course because there is no significant uh, development and with our in um, nl at this at this point in time there are no development fees as part of the new contract but the terms and conditions of the new contract signed is very very similar to the uh, uh, earlier contract there is no significant change except for the fact that since there is no development and with our in nl uh, at this point in time there are no development fees which is normal okay so thank you have a good day and i hope you know this uh, deal is taking process expedites and we get through it fast good luck to all of you Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Amit. Thank you. We have our follow-up question from the line of Satinder Singh Bedi from Eon Infotech. Please go ahead. Yeah, and thanks for the follow-up. What is the pending MAT credit available as of 31st of uh, March 2024, please? But Bedi, we are in the in the process of working it out. Uh, as we said, it was 30 crores on 31st March 2023. We expect it to go down by approximately 5 crores. Don't hold us to that specifically, but it should come down from 30 to about 25 crores. Manish, can you confirm? Yeah, yeah. So uh, when does this, when does this run down fully, uh, sir? Uh, approximately two more years, Mr. Bedi. Two two years, okay, okay, uh, okay. And sir, uh, uh, while okay, we understand in the short term there are no plans, okay. But given that we are fully occupied and the management has done a great job in doing so, uh, and that there is traction in the market, any medium term uh, plans of a redevelopment, let's say three or five years out, okay. Uh, uh, some way we could utilize the unutilized FAR. Okay, so any thoughts on that that the environment is exercised in ways on? No plans for that, Mr. Bidi. As we mentioned, the uh, the we are uh, the development aspect of the law knowledge talk is complete at this point. Uh, it's, it's the talk is too new and uh, the, to consider any kind of redevelopment of buildings that have been built not so long ago. So. Uh, yeah. At this point, nothing. No, understood. I think that's logical. Okay. And finally, sir, uh, uh, we we uh, we understand you uh, you uh, kind of uh, repeated this enough times that okay, there are various options and nothing has uh, uh, has crystallized so far in terms of resources. <laughs> uh, but uh, in terms of the small REIT, so the government came out with these small REIT regulations. Uh, so so uh, I just wanted to understand uh, that. Uh, Does that open an option for us, or is, are these regulations such that we don't even uh, get to use those regulations? So, so just uh, specifically from small reit point of view, that does that open another option uh, among the various options for us, or is it something that we don't qualify under or uh, don't get any uh, whatever benefit under? So, any thoughts on our our uh, small reit rules applicability to us? We are we are looking at that. Uh... regulation we are looking at that uh, feedback that has come uh, we have to look at it in the context that we are already a listed company prima facie this appears to be for companies that are not listed whether it will become relevant to us with some further changes or not is something that we are looking at and trying to understand uh, prima facie it looks like it is for companies that are not listed uh, so we have to always look at it in our listed context but again it's very new and we are trying to see uh, How, if at all, we would fit into anything under this particular uh, notification? Yeah, right, sir. Thank you very much. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. A reminder to all participants: you may press star and one to ask questions. A reminder to all participants: you may press star and one to ask questions. Are we still on the line? Uh, 
uh, yes sir as there are no further questions i would now like to hand the conference over to mr kunal sagar from nilon mm -hmm. limited for closing comments thank you we want to just thank all the the participants for joining this call we appreciate your interest and we'll look forward to hearing you and uh, having you on our next call as well thank you thank you very much thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you on behalf on behalf of nilon limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines thank you